When somebody's telling you to put your money somewhere, what's your system? What's your process? Is my money in the banks earning a decent rate of return above inflation? Are you freaking kidding me? Up until 08, 09, everybody was saying, real estate safe, real estate safe, can't lose in real estate. These are how millionaires strategize. Four values. I would like my serious money to grow. I'm not talking about your gambling money, your hope to get rich quick money. I'm talking about your serious money that you know needs to be there at a time when you need the money the most. And the values I would like for it to have, the characteristics I like it to have, I like the, my, my money liquid, I like my money safe, I like my money to earn a decent rate of return above an inflation, and when I take my money out, I like to have tax advantages with my money. See, these are some basic four tenets. So let me ask you this question. When somebody's telling you to put your money somewhere, what's your system, what's your process? So if you're not using one, consider using this. It's a system. Save yourself time, energy, and money. So therefore you're less emotional about money and you have a process on how to evaluate a decision on where to place your money. Because before I became a cash flow millionaire, I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. So I need to make sure I was smart with my money. I may not have been the fastest guy in the stock market, I may not be the fastest guy with real estate and all that stuff, but here's what I solidified over my career. Savings and cushion, and I solidified my income because I've chosen a career in the insurance industry that withstood the multiple recession I've been through and obviously now through the, through, through the pandemic. All right, first one, what am I talking about? Liquidity, is my money liquid inside banks? Yes. Is my money liquid with, uh, is my money safe with banks? Yes, up to $250,000, FDIC insurance. Is my money in the banks earning a decent rate of return above inflation? Are you freaking kidding me? Right? At best, 0.25, 0.5% uh, interest. Which means that if your money was to grow, if your money was to grow, it'd take you 140, 150, 160 years for your money to finally double. So your $1,000 that you invest there at 0.5%, it's going to take you 144, 155 some years, assuming that stays the same interest rate, for your money to finally double. Do you want to wait that long? Tax advantage. So when I withdraw my money, assuming this is a this is a normal account, I have to ha I have to pay taxes. So it's no. Okay. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. On liquidity and safety. No. No. On rate of return, it doesn't not it does not earn a rate of decent rate of return above inflation, and it does not have tax advantage of using savings accounts or CDs. So let's take a look at 401ks and IRAs. The money I'm, I'm assuming is going to be invested into the stock market, which is pretty common for a lot of 401ks and IRAs to be invested in. Okay, so liquidity, is my money liquid inside a 401k? No, you're not supposed to use that money until you're 59 and a half years old. If you do, there's a 10% withdrawal penalty and you gotta pay income tax, federal and state income tax, depending on what state that you live in, but you definitely gotta pay federal tax on top of the 10% early withdrawal penalty and had it not been for this CARES Act that uh, uh, President Trump put in, he put in the CARES Act that if you need to take money out of your 401k, they're, they're suspending the 10% early withdrawal penalty. But what's that doing for people in a 401k plan? It's spending down the money they saved hard for retirement, that the company matched for their retirement. Safety. Is my money safe with inside a 401k and IRA? If, is it is related to the stock market? No. Does, does money inside 401k IRA earn a decent rate of return? Assuming that the market's doing well, yes. But everybody knows you can lose money in the stock market too. Because there's no ceiling, there's no floor. Tax advantages. Well, it's tax, it's tax deferred as it's growing. So in other words, you don't pay taxes on the growth and your contributions, but you do pay tax on the withdrawals. 100% of what you withdraw is now exposed to income taxation by the federal government, depending on your state, also state income tax. So no, no, yes, it's like a half yes, and also a half yes for 401 ks and IRAs. Real estate. Everybody said, oh, you put all your money inside real estate, right? Smart people that never own real estate say, put your money inside real estate. Be careful of who you listen to with your money. Be careful who you listen. Hey, you know, if, if they've never accomplished much in their entire life, but they want to give you financial guidance and, 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 and insight on what to do with your money, even though they've never made it, you got to be careful about listening to those people. You got to listen to people that have been there, done that. You know, don't listen to the peanut gallery that has, has, has given you advice from the cheap seats. So real estate, liquidity. Do I, so if, if I put my money inside real estate, if I put my, my 5%, my 10%, my 20% down, the, when's the only time I get my money out of my real estate? Assuming the bank allows me to 
do a cash out refinance is when I sell it. So the only way to get my money back is either to sell it or refinance it. Otherwise, it's paper gains or paper losses, okay? So it's not liquid, no. Is my money safe? Well, up until 08, 09, everybody was saying, real estate safe, real estate safe, can't lose in real estate. Until they found it 08, 09, how sad that was. People working hard to build their American dream, they tied, associated their American dream to real estate, owning property, having own home ownership. So yes, when the market's doing well, but no, when the market's crashing. Rate of return, okay? Yes and no. Yes, if you're in a good zip code, no, if you're in a bad zip code. But then again, therein lies the opportunity too if you're a real estate investor. Okay, tax advantages. Okay, does my money have tax advantages? Depends on if you're single or you're married, and I'm assuming this is your residential property. Okay, if this is your home and you're single, the government allows you, the IRS allows you to have a certain amount of growth. It's called a capital gain without it being income taxable. At the recording of this video, if you're single, and let's say you bought a house for 250, and it grows to 500,000, and you're single, you sell for 500,000, that 250 is tax advantage. There's no taxes, there's no capital gains on that 250. If it goes to 300,000 gain, now that, that, that 50,000 dollars above the 250, now it's income, is, is a capital gains taxable, okay? If you're married, it's 500,000. So those are things that you have to ask your tax person. If you buy property, you sell property. Well, it's a different story if you're thinking about real estate investing, if this is property that you're investing in because now things fall into either short-term capital gains tax or long-term capital gains tax. But there's a, amount, a significant amount of tax advantages when you put your money inside real estate, big time. So that's a big attraction to it too as well. But listen, if your money really isn't growing and you're just fighting to pay the mortgage, you're fighting to keep tenants in the building, who cares what the tax advantages are? Tax advantages is like, you know, a cherry on top of a banana split. If you don't get it, fine. I just want, I want the banana split. So in this example, if I'm using my checklist of liquidity, safety, rate of return, real estate, again, has two of the four. Let's look at this mystery industry. There is such an industry where your money is liquid. There is such an industry, a financial tool, your money is safe. There is such a financial tool, your money is earning a decent rate of return above inflation. There is such a tool where your money has significant tax advantages that you don't have to wait till you're 59 and a half years old to withdraw your money to pay for your kids' college education or retire on. You know what that is? You guessed it. Life insurance structured, a prop, structured appropriately according to these laws here, okay? You gotta make sure, and some people say, well, what's the, what's the laws that allows me to do this? Well, the IRS code says a death benefit under 101 says no death benefit is income taxable. Section 7702 and 72E say a money, money is properly structured inside a life insurance policy based on cash value accumulation test or a guideline premium test, which your life insurance agent probably does not know about, can grow in a very significant way. So these IRS laws help favor those insurance contracts properly structured according to these, these, uh, these tax, uh, tax acts. TEFRA of 1982, DEFRA of 1984, TAMRA of 1988, which basically means that you can stuff money inside the insurance contracts with the IRS trying to stick their hand into it. And these things were done in the 80s. See, a lot of different financial tools today, like Bitcoin, and other financial uh, uh, strategies. They're being challenged right now because they're new. See, life insurance has been around for a minute. It's been through reform for a minute. The Armstrong Act, uh, the Life Insurance Armstrong Act, 19, I think 1903 and 1904, helped continue the, the transparency and the, the, the legal obligations that life insurance have to maintain reserves to make sure that it can pay their promises because a lot of life insurance companies today have been around for a very, very long time. Matter of fact, a lot of my life insurance policies today on my desk, you know, one of the life insurance companies that has been around since the United States had 30 states. And, uh, and there's nothing new about New Mexico, it's still Mexico. <laughs> there's, there's nothing uh, Arizona uh, about that state, it was still Mexico. That's how long one of these life insurance companies that I have, the policies that I have, has been around. So when you're having a conversation around these different things, you know, there's a combination of flow. So as you're building, back over here, if you're building your financial house, what do you want to build your foundation on? And these are how 
These are how millionaires strategize on how to have a financial tool so therefore they can keep the main thing the main thing. They keep the main thing their business, their career, and they don't have to worry about their financial house crumbling. That's how you build your house on solid ground. So even when the worst case scenario happens, boom, whatever I've built, boom, I'm passing it to my family. Okay, so if you've wondered, let me give you some data, let me give you some facts here. If you ever wonder if people are buying life insurance, especially right now during the COVID, especially during the recession, check this out. Life in, there's, there's some data here by the ACLI, the American Council of Life Insurance. Here's their data, okay? They, they put here, they put here that life insurance in force that is due to be paid to beneficiaries over the next years is $34 trillion. $34 trillion is due to be paid to a beneficiary, beneficiaries in the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And so people are still buying life insurance to the tune of $3.1 trillion. Again, data given here by the ACLI, the American Council of Life Insurance, life insurers. And if you thought that life insurance didn't have a big play in assistance to this program called Social Security, listen, if it wasn't for the life insurance industry, if it wasn't for the life insurance industry, I don't know where Social Security would be today, but life insurance supplements Social Security by $1.5 trillion over the next nine years. The life insurance industry has more than $8.6 trillion invested into the economy. By the way, I'm gonna be doing a video here of downtown Chicago. Some of the biggest buildings here owned by life insurance companies will probably shock you. You drive by them, you're seeing them, and every major city has big buildings owned by life insurance companies. But the reason why the government, the reason why the government gives such favorable laws to the life insurance industry, because the life insurance industry is a big partner, financially speaking, to the independent person, to its citizens. Why? Because if the citizens didn't have the opportunity to get life insurance and take advantage of these tax laws, these citizens would have to depend upon the government in terms of social service programs. So the government now says, listen, if you buy your own policy, if you buy your own private insurance, you buy your own private permanent insurance, temporary policy, we'll give you significant tax advantages. Because now you're self-insuring yourself you're not depending upon church, you're not depending upon charity, and you're definitely not dependent upon who? The government. So therefore, the insurance carriers, insurance industry has some very, very favorable tax laws.